Hey everyone and welcome to Shred the Veil. I'm Daniel here with Derek and I'm very excited to have two guests with us here today, Laura Eisenhower and Drago Reed. Um, I think most of us know who these people are, but uh, in, just in case, I will do a quick bio on each of them. Um, Laura is a researcher, author, and medical intuitive astrologer, internationally acclaimed speaker, spread and worked worldwide. She's the great granddaughter of President Dwight Eisenhower. She's been in the exopolitics realm. Her specialties are alchemy, metaphysics, astrology, galactic history. Um, she works to free us from the 3D holographic time loop, false arconic systems, military industrial complex, and expose hidden agendas so we can take our power back. Um, and she's been a you know pioneer in this a movement, this movement to awaken people and help us all on our ascension path. Um, we just a couple of weeks ago we interviewed uh, Neil Gar and I considered him a, a pioneer in this in this movement as as well and I I, I hold you in the same light Laura I know that you've done so much for everyone here and um, you really uh, were instrumental in helping us get started with Shred the Veil um, you know yeah. it was uh, you had Derek on a show with Dan Willis one time talking about our grandfather and um, that just seeing that it, it occurred to me that. Hey, maybe other people would be interested in learning about our grandfather. So that's when I reached out to Infinite TV. Then it was Conscious Vitality, and just the ball started going from there. And um, you played a big part of that. And we've had you on our show a couple times so far. So it's great to have you back again. Um, and then uh, we also have uh, Drago Reed, who um, has a pretty awesome background. He is a level two quantum healing hypnosis technique QHHT practitioner. Um, he's a secret space program experiencer. My lab abductee. Um, he's had a couple of near death experiences, out of body experiences that resulted in some, you know, brain issues that uh, rewired your brain, basically, it sounds like, so that you have some some different abilities that are pretty, pretty impressive. Um, advanced IQ, um, uh, clear cognition, and um, just this intelligence that allows you to go far into the regression techniques that you do and you've you've learned so much and gained so much information and um uh, you are definitely a wealth of knowledge in everything that is the disclosure movement and the you know awakening process that we're all going through so we're very honored to have you both on the show thank you guys for joining us so much it's awesome you, man. and so and you, uh, and you guys have a new show combined called the rebel collective correct that's also something we'll talk about for sure um so I, I love what you guys have done so far with that too um definitely definitely what's disclosures needing right now so thank you for doing that and starting up yeah definitely want to talk about that some more um i guess we're gonna have kind of like a free flow conversation but um i would like to ask drago maybe if you could um give a little summary a uh, little more detail on your background um that people might not be as familiar with um and just kind of how you got to this point and, and on your mission right now with what you're doing mm, i guess i would say i'm a lifelong uh my lab abductee uh started when my first abduction i think it was around six and i've been in the monarch mk ultra program which has resulted into me getting pulled into kruger's groups like knocked waffen um basically it's been a lifetime of struggle and this led me to healing, wanting to try to figure out how to heal myself because I was having so much pain physically, mentally. I didn't know what to talk to. And then suddenly I come upon the realm of super soldiers and I deep dive into it. It was Max Spears, the first guy that actually kind of helped solidify and help make real my experiences. Because before him, I don't recall many people that were stepping forward talking about this kind of testimony in the world. So... It was my deep dive with Max Spears that really threw me into the world and really pulled back that veil of my experiences and let me know there was other people out there like me. So that led me to Dolores Cannon. Um, I wanted to know more, more about myself, why I was missing memories. And I knew that when I discovered Dolores Cannon, I actually discovered her technique through a hypnotherapist named Alba Weinman out of Miami. And basically, I deep dived her videos. I think I watched maybe four or five hundred hours of regression sessions and i took notes and i got obsessed with it 
And the answers I would find from her sessions answered my life. So at that point, I knew this is what I needed to do for the world and do for myself. So I became a Dolores Cannon practitioner. And since then, man, it's been a wild freaking ride. What I've discovered, is in, it's insane, man. Like, I used to feel crazy, but now I'm, I feel more vilified now and I feel more heard and seen because back in the day, you couldn't talk about these experiences because you were stigmatized. Like, even today, certain people around us, like, you still can't tell the truth. Even, like, to your closest co-workers and family and, like... But I feel that a rift has happened, an uncovering of the veil, and like people are wanting to search for these things because they're tired of living the material life. They're tired of not feeling substance and feeling connection to anything. They're just all disconnected. And that's what hypnosis helped me do. It helped me figure out why I was disconnected in life, why I was pushing these memories away, why I went through so much trauma. So now I've done over 500 clients and... I've discovered so many amazing things and I'm here now in this moment of discovery. That's awesome. How many, how many sessions have you done, Drago? So I've, I've, um, I would say around 520 individual people, but I would say around 800 sessions. But with QHHT, we only count the individuals we do. We don't count all the sessions. So the additional sessions, I would say up to 300, those are deep diving. Re repeat clients coming in, SSP related stuff, MK Ultra, trauma, abuse, people wanting to know their extraterrestrial lineage, going all the way back to source, creating a book for themselves, you know, just me showing them all the lives they've lived and un answering unlimited questions. So that deep dive into individuals, putting them under multiple times with the same person, wow, it shows us that we are these complex energy that is non-physical and we basically incarnate life to life paying out karma doing experiences and just living life to see what we're capable of and that's truly what we are how oh, beautiful yeah it's amazing what you've done so far and the journey you're on I mean, <laughs> you're definitely one of a kind in a lot in a lot of ways and i think we know well, we know, but others should definitely know more about your story and the portal technology and things like that. That uh, that you're you're starting to find out more and more, and what you do behind the scenes and and whatever other realities you know when it comes to this SSP stuff, it it goes into a rabbit hole. That's for sure. So, yeah, yeah, uh, lots to uncover there. Yeah, that's definitely my realm, man. I, I love the realm of Doctor Strange because basically I kind of have his abilities because of my trauma and what I've been through and my bike crash and all that stuff. And like the ability to see in, in slow motion and to have complex scenarios all unfold simultaneously and you being able to figure out any scenario the blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, man. And like I've like a 99 point something accuracy rate, man. Like it's, it's insane. And like, I think it was five years ago, six years ago when I started QHHT that I found out within the first year that I was supposed to be bringing portal technology to the world. And I just like, I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. I'm like, that would never pass the national security act sensors. And like, come on, why me? Mm -hmm. And then years later, I figure out I'm involved in these programs with portal tech and Fast forward to now, I just launched my show, Portal to Another Dimension. So it all segues back into portals, no matter what. It all returns back to the source of portals. Right. right. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Um, okay. I guess in general, um, coming in 2024, what do you guys see happening this year? What are your thoughts or insights or intuition telling you uh, that's uh, in store for us in the year ahead? Laura, go for it if you want. Oh, was Ed in store for us for the year ahead? Oh, gosh. I'm not one to, like, want to create predictions because I really feel it's about us individually. Like, you know, what's in store for you? You know, what – it has to fall back on the person. Um, I really feel like the sun and Pluto and Aquarius, Pluto going direct and Aquarius – you know, is 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 a, a huge shift. Um, I feel it's going to be a lot more difficult for them to throw any psyops or just pandemic kind of stuff at us 
without more of an uproar and more of a like enough already. Um, I really like appreciate Dr. Shiva's movement and what he's doing and uh, just every individual who's just really standing strong in their sovereignty or what their real soul mission is instead of answering to this uh, divide and conquer like fear tactic strategies that are wanting to assimilate people into an artificial timeline, which has been very successful to a certain degree. Right. But, you know, I, I see a lot more of like rehabilitation, more coming to terms with the injuries and the wounds of what this deep state in cabal has done to people through the medical industry and the educational systems and uh, like every sector of our society and like where that has harmed us, you know, like there'll be more resources for how to recover and heal from that on a physical level, on an emotional, mental, every level, you know, deprogramming, healing the physical body um, and recovering and, and really standing strong and, you know, just like us being the disclosure, um, you know, who knows how the elections are going to go? You know, it's, it's probably going to be just as targeted as it was last time um, to keep the good ones out of the way. But, you know, maybe they'll be more revealed about how much some of these leaders that we thought were maybe heroes actually really aren't. Um, I I don't know. I, I, I think people are starting to be a lot more resourceful, a lot more... Uh, focused on how to be self-sufficient and sovereign and protected and prepared for the times ahead because anything, you know, could happen. Whatever getting shut down, uh, money system shifting, the electrical grid collapsing, internet, you know, it's just like we want to be prepared for everything, but be also inspired to be true to ourselves and 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 what we can create as we rebuild and manifest sort of this new earth energy which isn't really new it's it's just a part of like the newness being a breakthrough of you know we don't need to be in this dependency bond with this inverted system uh and 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 be dragged into it uh and and have it like harvest our creative imagination and our like vitality and our life force we can like move it over here and work like in alignment with cosmic and natural law and the abundance that mother earth provides and build community and pull our resources together to, you know, create something a lot better than what we've been given so that our kids don't have to, you know, sit in class and be confused about their gender and, and, and have the government, you know, act like they're the true that they're the parent and the parents really don't have much of a voice. I mean, one of the most shocking things I saw in 2023 was a woman uh, a headline saying a woman's cap uh, kidnapped her child. How do you kidnap your own kid? Because she left the system and wanted to go to an alternative community because she didn't want to go along with the mandates or the government um, tyranny mm -hmm. that yeah. the government thinks it owns your kids more than the mother or the father, you know, that that would be called kidnapping, right? So I think, you know, the surge of energies, uh, Saturn, Neptune, conjunct, a lot about like the spiritual, the belief systems, you know, um, where can we move beyond the distortions of false beliefs that are not in alignment with our ability to manifest and co-create a beautiful, you know, future. So Saturn wants to create structure, discipline, and responsibility. Neptune wants to expand into the multidimensional and the spiritual. But where is Saturn limiting that through indoctrination or religion or like Israel wars and all this kind of stuff? Where can we, you know, take the upper hand and be in the higher level of that Saturn energy and, you know, anchor heaven on earth because our consciousness and our empowerment and our truth and what we envision and what we dream you know is is what we are going to ground and anchor and manifest as you know the the world that we can you know create so i predict that people are going to be a lot more empowered to just like not be answering to something outside of themselves but answering to something within and then being uh more inspired to find like-minded people that are uh, that have had enough as well mm -hmm. and then just start to rebuild a new existence 
so that to me is Pluto moving into Aquarius, the Aquarian age, whatever you want to call it. Um, but of course the weaponized PSYOP inverted version of it. Yeah. A lot of people will go down that road, but I think a lot of people will begin to just have enough of it. And so that bridge between the two splitting timelines and this bifurcation, mm -hmm. you know, will be sort of like pulling as many people out of that muck and into like what really will help sustain them and help them recover and rehabilitate and overcome, you know, the trauma and tragedy of being so betrayed and assaulted and um, on every level, which is what this new world order agenda has done to people that they consented to something that uh, is actually been harmful that they thought was helpful. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I think a, lot, a lot more awakening is going to happen. Uh, uh, yeah, I love that. I love the, the positive take on that because there is going to be that turmoil, I think. And I re just remember it just reminded me of 2020. And that was, you know, right after 2019, we just said how that beautiful like contact in the desert, for instance, with a great conference. That was like one of the biggest venues and most amount of people gathered at one time. And I remember even saying at that conference, this will probably never happen again because it's at the tipping point of so many waking up. And I just felt like whether good or bad, something's going to happen. That's just going to just kind of flip one way or another. And then, of course, 2020 happens and we all know the pandemic and everything. And it was like you were saying the inversion and like the perversion of the truth and what's real, what we're really, you know, what we really want to see. But everything's flipped over. Everything's upside down. And so that's just I, I think it's been a gradual move since then. But so 2023 has actually been really tumultuous. But you're saying, do you think? based on the astrology and as even as a collective that uh 2024 is going to be more of that but then also at the same time more of a change for the better and a positive spin i, I see it a change for the better if you look at the nodes north node in aries also chiron in aries it's very much the wounded ego the wounded warrior the wounded healer you know mars uh north node okay we want to like step into that and look at that um, are we going to be victimized? Are we going to have false identities that uh, are based in, you know, being groomed and indoctrinated? Or are we going to like look at how we've been wounded and injured by these things and be the warrior and like move forward and uh, um, like lead by example and like, you know, just uh, people are, you know, obviously at different stages, depending on where we're looking, you know, um, how, how immersed a person is in the system versus people that are have already prepared or like like have let go of that a long time ago like us <laughs> like never was really about it um right you know, so how much the bs the bs meter is coming into factor a lot more i just remember yeah I just yeah so, so about that. yeah uh -huh. yeah so i mean like every aspect planetary alignment has its shadow side of how a person's going to respond to it you know, and a squared aspect always creates like challenge and conflict. So in the face of that conflict and challenge or adversity, do you cower in fear and and be victimized or and give your power away? Or do you start to see through the bullshit and and you become more empowered, more resourceful, more uh, connected to like what your intuition is trying to tell you and what other people have been trying to like show you, you know, all the red flags that you might have ignored that are now like blazing like bonfires, you know, like, come on over here, guys. <laughs> I don't know. I just think, yeah, it can only continue to just ripple out. And, you know, I think there's a lot more being held accountable, a lot more just like, because so much damage has been done, you know, you, you can censor all you want, but like, you know, people have real stories, people that didn't yeah. uh, like, like believe in, what we might have warned them about or what we are saying now they're living the results. And, 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 and so, you know, the, the compassionate ones that are going to help them to recover and heal. Um, you know, I, I think there's going to be a lot, you know, of that, of coming to terms with like, wow, you know, all the manipulation of y'all you know, people thinking it was the right thing to do to protect others, you know, how, how people's good intent has been so targeted, 
you know, and, and it's just so mean, <laughs> like these agendas are so mean that, you know, I just see more love and compassion with a lot of Neptune, Saturn, that the new structure of Saturn is going to be, you know, let's get real. Let's be, empath let, let's be compassionate. Let's be loving, you know, be spiritual, not dogmatic, religious. And in these wars with each other of like my God, your God, but like, really, what does it mean to be a Christed being a person of compassion, a person who really just like wants to help your fellow brother and sister neighbor, you know, and just like, you know, like we're, you know, just like recover from uh, the atrocities of all these assaults that the human race has been experiencing for thousands of years. Yes. Yeah. 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 A lot of times it's gotten so bad that people are that were blind before just waking up left and right because it's, it's just so extreme. And I like the idea that you mentioned about, having a bridge now kind of to help people get over to this um you know more of a, of a 5d type timeline in the, in the bifurcate bifurcation and bringing more people um to that side of of, of knowing their higher selves and um you know just owning their somber sovereignty and being their authentic self to really feel and tap into you know where we're supposed to ascend to so that, I, I think there's a lot of that is going to happen i definitely agree um uh, but i Talking about timelines, like I know, Drago, you have some ideas about timelines and your experience uh, with that. Um, as we talk about, you know, a lot of people talk about you know, the 3D timeline, there's going to split off for the 5D timeline. And, you know, people who are aware and, you know, attuned to various you know, frequencies will be able to live in a different, um, a better timeline than, than, the, than the 3D one. So um, I guess, what are your thoughts on that? Are we diverging or converging to something else or? Um, there's a lot of different takes on it, so it's curious what you think about that. Well, the universe is so convoluted that the answer is both yes and no. It depends what you signed up for. You made an incarnational agreement to be here at this time, in this place, in this moment, this time of evolution and awakening and revolution. So if your path with your evolution and your karma is going to steer you towards the more negative timeline, then that's what you're going to experience. If you've done the internal work and you've been trying to clear your karma, your karma, you've been working on that dark night of the soul and you're clearing those contracts, you're fulfilling your agreements, then you can ascend to the next one. But understand this is a multiverse. We are existing simultaneously in 5D and 3D and 1D and all the other dimensions simultaneously. If you remember that you are source, you are a fractal of God, meaning you exist within all the dimensions. So trying to say that your consciousness is only localized to this one timeline won't make sense. We found out that time is not linear. So you're living all your lives simultaneously, past, present, and parallel at the same moment. So to only focus on the question is, where are we headed? You're only thinking from a single life of all the lives you're living simultaneously where you're existing already in 5D. You're existing in all these other dimensions. So it's it's a it's a it's an answer that's hard to give you because again, this is a multiverse. The answer is yes and no. Right. So it's kind of like experience. Two people, you'll get a group of people and they'll experience the same thing, right? They'll argue amongst themselves about what actually happened because both people are right. One person saw one thing happen. The other person saw another thing happen. That is separate. It is separate in timeline. We assume we're living the same timeline simply because we say we co-create this timeline. Therefore, it's one congruent timeline. No, it's not. It's 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 like the Russian nesting doll. It's an onion. It's layers upon layers upon layers, fractally, fractalized. Mm -hmm. We're living all of it. So does that kind of answer that question a little bit? Make it, it make more sense? It's kind of yeah. like where where your mind and where your heart goes is where you're going to eventually end up if you, yeah, where you, where you want to focus your attention, right? In, in, in a lot of ways. And we all have uh, perspectives on it. So and until you have all those perspectives collectively, you don't have a whole truth or, you know, the whole experience as it is. Yeah. And like Laura was saying earlier, like it's hard to make predictions about what's going to happen because no one is coming to the conclusion that we're all experiencing different timelines simultaneously. 
And this is proved in the Mandela effect. Mm -hmm. That's why we all argue amongst ourselves about what Darth Vader said or like Forrest Gump's box of chocolates or the freaking Berenstein Bears. It's mm -hmm. all irrelevant. Everybody's correct. We have merged into this timeline and this time stream. We're all getting thrown together. Talked yeah. about this in a couple of other shows, but like the timeline is sentient and it does not like to be changed. It is conscious. It is a living being. And when you try to change something that has consciousness, that host consciousness is not going to like it. And that timeline is a little bit more powerful than the being trying to create it. So it's always going to pop back in itself. And I believe that all these things, all these things happen around the world and all the Mandela effects. It's because we've messed up time so much that time's trying to correct itself. And we're in that moment. So you asked Laura, what, what predictions do we have this year? It depends what you agreed to witness. If you want to witness more dominion fraud, more election interference, more people just rising in the millions across country to country and country. I've never seen no many, I've never seen this many people rise in my life, not in any time in history. Like it's totaling billion. That many hundreds of millions of people total that are rising is against their own governments right now. So everybody is tired of it. We're tired of being lied to. We're tired of all the false flags. We're tired of them throwing it in our face with predictive programming of what they're going to do. And I, I think we're just, we've had enough of it. So I believe this is our moment in time. And we don't know what's going to happen. I don't believe anyone knows what's going to happen. So if you're going to make predictions, that's a really scary ground to, to, to walk through because almost every time you're going to be wrong. And I'll stick to that. That's what my prediction is. Nice. Good way to look at it. Yeah. I had a question. Well, I, I definitely want to talk uh, about Laura's. I know she's got a book coming out, but to preface that, I hope it's okay to talk about that, Laura. <laughs> you already talked about it. Um, but but you, when I I've seen them, of course, a lot of your talks, and when I've been privileged to see you a couple of times, and and I was curious to get more background on Dan Cooper and your uh relationship with Dan Cooper, like who he is and kind of the intel you've gotten and, and things that have kind of helped validate more about your great grandfather, about President Eisenhower and what his role was and who he was interacting with and you know a lot of things that m are coming to light that maybe the public the, even this disclosure movement had wrong right um yeah. i'd love to hear more about that <laughs> yeah well that's definitely all in my book so dan cooper says he is the senior advisor to the earth alliance um i could like find his bio if that would help people but i don't know if i can get it up uh too quickly but yeah, he's got quite the story. Um, and he's shared a lot of information with me. He put a comment under a video I did, a round table with Dan Willis and Elena. And uh, he was just correcting some things. And he was just saying, well, actually, this happened. And 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 it was very detailed. And I said, whoa, like, can I, like, talk to you? Like, this is, like, fascinating. I've never really heard this. And he said, yeah. And immediately, I, um, I think I sent him... I gave him my email. He immediately emailed me, said, Hey, it's Dan Cooper. And uh, from that point on, we uh, had a back and forth. And now he was supposedly part of the secret space program too. And a 20. Yeah. He was part of the secret space program, dark fleet um, and project moon shadow uh, and, and how this all got turned around. Eisenhower played a part in, um, shifting the military into a positive direction uh super soldier programs um obviously not all of it but the earth right. alliance and the icc the usmc special section of um randy kramer uh has talked about it well he's a part of it dan cooper had like this transfer from you know being controlled by you know the dark fleet Mm -hmm. A lot of the information that he told me was coming from his, like, from the Nazis. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, 
And then he was able to shift over and become the senior advisor to the Earth Alliance. And he has a direct relationship with the Guardians. And he was able to disclose information to me about uh, his, uh, like what he does, what the missions are all about, and Eisenhower's relationship with Val Thor and how Eisenhower petitioned the Guardians to put an outer barrier around the planet in 2014. Uh, set up, you know, the White Hats and the Earth Alliance and just all these different, you know, things that, um, yeah, I, I go into detail in my book. You know, it's hard to just kind of like say in an interview. It's oh, just yeah, of course. So much. But um, I'd... yeah, like an unconditional sur surrender agreement that took place in 1952 under Truman. And actually, the uh, Val Thor was advising um, the Truman administration and uh, that uh, warning about the Nordics and the Greys, right? So, mm -hmm a lot of what we hear in the disclosure community is that the first contact was with the Nordics and the Nordics were warning about the greys. Um, but Val Thor supposedly warned about the Nordics and mm -hmm. their connection with the Nazis yeah. in the eugenics programs and, you know, all these different things and the underground city of new Berlin that was created and, um, and also warned about the greys. And so Eisenhower and Val Thor's relationship you know, began a lot earlier on than a lot of people thought, you know, mm. but then that whole putting him on VIP status for three years at the Pentagon uh, from Frank Strange's book happened later in the 1950s. But there was an invasion of uh, the Dulce underground base uh, mm. that he um, ordered and then attempted to do that as well to Area 51. So, all of that is in the book. Like him and I had a back and forth exchange. I asked him every question under the sun. Um, and yeah, he just generously just gave me a lot of information. So I have just hundreds of emails and uh, I, I put, you know, the really significant ones in the book. And I also brought in, you know, other things that I've heard, you know, just for the reader yeah. to be like, okay, well, we heard this. But now look at this. And it actually makes a whole hell of a lot of sense that when the UFOs flew over the Capitol in 1952, yeah. uh, that uh, that was when the unconditional surrender agreement took place. And what that meant was that MJ-12 was the ones that were making the deals with the technology trades. And uh, and that was all MJ-12. It wasn't Eisenhower that signed the treaties. And that is what the, the internet or the false narratives and false disclosure stories are going to tell you is that Eisenhower was the one that signed the Griotta Treaty. And back and forth with Dan, he's just like, how many times do I have to tell you that it's absolutely impossible because the Unconditional Surrender Agreement stated that, you know, this was only in the hands of MJ-12. The president mm -hmm. had lost like that power and the top secret information, all the levels above the president, you know, 1947, these laws were put into place. And then mm -hmm. 1952, it was solidified with that Unconditional Surrender Agreement to the Nazis. And so because Eisenhower didn't want to go along with that, he covertly began to set up this positive military on all these different levels with the assistance of Val Thor. Wow. That's what I was going to say. He basically started the alliance in that whole process back then, right? The, yeah. The there was alliance, the White Hats, and uh, just connecting in with the Guardians. And then that is somehow connected to why I was born into this family. And there was a book written that said... Uh, because th that he was um, not bent on power or corruption. Uh, he worked with these star beings that they would have a future descendant come into the family to disclose the truth that relates to his speech about the military industrial complex. And so when the woman handed me the book, she goes, they're talking about you. And I'm like, what? Wow. <laughs> and that's in the book too. Like how um, there's a whole migration of souls, you know, like you guys, like all <laughs> of us that are doing this work, that there would be a migration of souls coming in in 1952, the same year the Unconditional Surrender Agreement was signed, that there was a migration of advanced souls called light lifes that would come in, like star seeds, mm -hmm. that would bring about this great awakening. And one would be in the Eisenhower family and many that are like all of us that come together and do what we can to disclose as much information as we can uh, with love in our hearts, and, and not in the divide and conquer and bullshit that, you know, sometimes infiltrates these movements and these yeah. communities. So that's not like what we're all about. So, you know, I, I would say that 
a lot of people are that migration of souls, but this isn't the first migration, right? You know, g going back to the, you know, Emerald Covenant, Covenant Emerald Order and, um, and how that all got like messed with in the Atlantean times. But, uh, it just, yeah, this is just a lot. I'll, I'll just kind of leave it at that for now. I love it that you have it all in one place now. I'm sure there's so much. I'm so glad it's all in a book. It's just kind of like, yeah, yeah. takes so much pressure off. Just, like, just read the book. Um, I, 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 get... I, hope, I hope it, it's, yeah, really helps people to connect some dots because that's what I... I've been doing. Oh, I know it will. I know you must, yeah, yeah, you must, you're going to be, yeah, so relieved and we're going to be so grateful for <laughs> finally getting to read it. Did you get any validation too based on, I mean, I don't know if a lot of people know about your uh, sort of, in, you're trying to get in, you're almost indoctrinated or, or told, you know, this was by your own free will to go to this off planet, you know, mission to Mars and all that kind of thing. I don't know if people realize that, but you, yeah, you, you have a whole personal experience with that and uh, someone you, you know, were in a relationship with and try to get you to, to go with them. Um, that's a crazy story in itself. Did you get a lot of validation from uh uh dan from dan had yeah 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 and it's in the book too just um yeah they didn't expect me to go in this direction they thought that they could you know kind of convince me that going to mars would have been a good idea and so there was a pre-targeting before birth because i guess um they found out that you know a child would come in and want to expose all this stuff and so mm -hmm. with the looking glass technologies they were able to you know target me and um a partner who with like my labs and a lot of manipulation kind of like used him as bait to mm -hmm. draw me in to like go off planet. And I think that is part of the bigger agreement of crushing military industrial complex and like alternative three and things that took place in the Eisenhower administration that that would be presented to me, you know, as a choice, you know? So, so when uh, Drago and I did a show with Ileana, the star traveler remote viewer, um, I supposedly, counseled ike or warned him in that administration and then he's been my guide in this lifetime wow. which helped me to not you know go to mars so it's kind of like you know it's like oh we're in the human realm we don't quite remember everything but you know like cause he yeah. was showing up when i was a kid and and then in spirit form or whatever i was able to influence him or help him to not make any deals or trust the bad guys or the wrong people mm -hmm. um so it's been, it's been like this very like bigger picture kind of mission, you know, for a while. Um, and, and yeah, just the relationship with Val Thor and having lifetimes on Venus and just being, you know, part of the star beings that played a role in influencing the administration, then coming into human form. Right. So here we are, like you guys, we're here in human form, right. But we've been other things before. And it's very different when you're land in this physical body, um, but it, it all just like starts to make sense. And so I, and, 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 and really, I think the greatest message is, and what a lot of the communication is, is that it's not about the governmental system. It's not about one leader. It's about awakening that within all of us, that we have such a calling to answer to. Um, and if we can like, just really listen to that inner voice and stand strong and, being true to your calling, you know, that's, what's going to shift the planet. And I think the speech, his final speech being influenced by Val Thor saying a knowledgeable and aware citizenry is mm -hmm. what is going to, you know, help us to deal with the misplacement, the, the, the misuse of power, the um, military industrial complex, a knowledgeable and aware citizenry. That's what's going to save the day, you know, yeah. because it's a war on consciousness. It's all about the indoctrination and the mind control and how after 1947 and 1952, that whole period of, you know, MK ultra programs and, and all the mockingbird media and everything, you know, grooming and indoctrinating, you know, humans into consenting to a new world order and this globalist, you know, agenda, mm -hmm. um, a knowledgeable and aware citizenry is going to win the war, uh, of the mind uh, uh, of the soul, you know, this AI transhumanism, right? We're seeing gender confusion. And I mean, it's just like, we're living it. We're living it. You know, it's a total showdown of forces right now for people to just like 
like really walk away and become that knowledgeable and aware citizenry because uh it's not going to really come from the governments it's going to come from our ability to do the real work inwardly and and you know we've all been tasked with like a very very important mission and the more we bring it together in a unified way the more we're going to crush it because it doesn't have any power except for the power it's stolen and tricked us out of so we are the ones that have the power we're the powers that be <laughs> you know they're just like stolen power, manipulation, siphoning, harvesting, and inverting everything. So. Exactly. Exactly. Draco, you want to add anything to that? I was thinking when uh, I set up the special section of the Marine Corps via through, through Project Moonshadow, that was when he had found out that Monarch had their own secret space program and their own super soldiers. And basically what Project Moonshadow Shadow was, it was a project focused on training my labs without the trauma-based mind control. So it was the first program that did not use trauma and splintering and alters to create soldiers. So mm -hmm. he did it the right way. Mm -hmm. He wanted to, 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 to contribute to something that would be like spy versus spy. You have the white hats and the black hats. So like that was literally his response with Moonshadow. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the my labs that were involved in Moonshadow, I think it was 300 kids and they were sent to Lunar Operation Command. And when they grew up, they were sent to Earth Defense Force and into Radiant Guardian and then to other stuff like Mars Defense Force. So like the legislation he made, like that was pivotal, pivot to pivotal. I always get that word wrong. I got that word wrong in the last show. <laughs> it was pivotal. And balancing the war because for the first time we had soldiers with clear minds against soldiers that's been tortured and traumatized their entire life. So imagine that it's like the entire GI Joe story. You have the good guys and the bad guys, but they're all in the secret space program. A mm -hmm. lot of them are all military abductions and this is the current war of the planet, one side against the other. When does is that, that happen? Technology, yeah. yeah, is that the technology that has like the, the green light and the red light or what's that? Okay, that so 3GR only came out on six gen soldiers. So yeah. basically, yeah. I'm a, I think I'm a fifth gen, which means I was born in 1980 and I think you had five years to your year and it tells you what gen you are. So my year range is fifth gen. They started doing 3GR and 6th gen soldiers. So I was one of the, the the ones that had to unfortunately go through all the negative stuff. Yeah. And now they use 3GR. They basically flash three green lights, then one red light, then a tone. And it puts you in a programmable hypnagogic state no matter who you are. And they even showed it in the series Fringe in one of the episodes. It freaked me out when I saw it the first time. I'm like, mm -hmm. they put real classified technology in that show. And it was done so fast. I was just like, my mind was blown, man. I know I like that show for a reason. <laughs> that was a good show. There's nothing but truth in French, man. Like if, if yeah. anybody wants to deep dive into timelines and they don't understand how complicated time is and time travel, watch the entire series French. It's about the entire MK Ultra program. It's about time travel, timelines, everything. Oh, yeah. No, I think I... What? Yeah. Yes, I, I did watch... I think I watched all of it. The, you're talking about the series Fringe? Yeah, the series. Yeah, amazing show. And it had Leonard Nimoy. He played uh, William Bell. He was basically the, the leader yeah, of the massive dynamics. And that would be basically the top of the military industrial complex. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. William Stop. Bell was making all the classified technologies for the MIC and stuff. And they admitted all that in the show. Mm hmm that's why they call it massive dynamics because it was the biggest on the planet, the biggest corporation. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that this, the, the two main characters are Jessica and Peter. <laughs> that's what Jessica would always say, like the correlation between that. Um, well, I don't know. Maybe that's just coincidence, but related to. She does say that. She says she's the original Olive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The and, uh, that's, that's why Peter remembers me so much from the ops, because we took part in a lot of the same ops, me, him and Jessica. Mm -hmm. And that's, I feel that's kind of what happened to me. I was taken from another timeline and put in another timeline <laughs> against my will. And that my story is public with that. Peter and Jessica's already verified that. Mm -hmm. Like I've had remote viewing done on that. And it's just like, 
I just don't know why it was done. Because certain remote viewers, they tell me it's classified. You know, that means we cannot go any further with this because even talking about it in private can be dangerous, you know? Wow. Wow. Okay. And Ileana, did she say that when she was, it was she one of the people that was saying, I can't say more or. He's, he's one of them. But uh, when, when someone tells you it's classified, you have to drop it because you have to understand for operational security, you can affect them by them giving you information they remote viewed and that can cause backlash with them and harm them. So you got to respect it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then Ileana did some awesome remote viewing for you guys as well. Yeah. Yes, she did. That she and we'll we'll try to get into that. We're trying to confirm and validate a lot of this stuff. But it was amazing that she, that she, she I, I thought, you know, because I was talking to you, Drago, about this, and I thought you had given her that whole summary that I did, which was very vague anyway. But she was like, No, I didn't get anything. I just got your grandfather. It was about your grandfather, and then she went off that. And I was like, Holy crap. If she somehow tapped into all that. But anyway, it's about time and it's related to time. And our grandfather might have been one of the first to deal with like whatever. It was chronovisor related stuff and things like that. But um yeah, even, talking about stuff you know, that he mentioned in his book about, you know, he never got into specifics about it. I, I don't know he probably wasn't uh, comfortable divulging so much publicly, but uh the what he hinted about was kind of right on what she was talking about, and she had never apparently seen his book or any, knew anything about it. So it was pretty remarkable because it was very specific yeah yeah about Ileana is she doesn't like to know anything about any subject she likes to remote view she she does it like Courtney like Courtney Brown taught her man do it blind don't go in with predispositions or assumptions of what you're going to be viewing because that's when you contaminate the data mm -hmm. that's why it's, it's it's best to have a tasker give you an eight digit number and that remote viewer has no idea what they're going to be viewing. Mm -hmm. Now the remote viewer can say, hey, tasker, I'm going to give you 10 subjects, 20 subjects. That's all the remote viewer is going to know about. Mm -hmm. Subconsciously, she knows the idea of what's going to see, but the tasker is going to give her what she's going to see, and she's going in blind. So I was careful with what I told Ileana. As we discussed privately, don't tell her any details. We want a nice, clean viewing, and then boom. Everything you suspected, everything you figured out that was written about, it was confirmed. And she had no idea about your grandfather at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's mind-blowing, yeah, for sure. It, it, just, it just gets us to ask more questions. Than <laughs> we definitely have more questions now. So it's going to be interesting. But on that note, just out of side notes, like I'm, I'm trying to go down the remote viewing side of things to find out answers. Um, for now anyway, but I think my brother would definitely be up to a, to a QHHT with you, uh, soon, sooner rather than later and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'd be into that. I, I think I have Jessica tried something with me before and I had, you know, some, some success with it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'd like to go like deeper into that on the QHHT side of things for sure. Well, the good thing about QHHT is it's in person only. Like most of the modalities are done online. So it's 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 easier to meet someone, look them in the face, look them in the eyes and read their energy versus like you doing something over the Internet because it's not really personal. Like when it's like this interview, like we're talking to each other, but there's nothing better than us all four being in the same room, having a dialogue or discourse, you know, mm -hmm. so do it in a person. It makes it more personal. It makes you trust a little bit more and makes you allow you to drop your walls a little bit more because you're deep diving into my soul. When you meet me, you can see who I am. I'm I'm notorious for being 100 percent real no matter what. If I have something to tell you, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Period. I'm just I'm real. And I think it goes for both of you. You and Laura, <laughs> Laura is the same way. That's what I think so many people gravitate to her message and she's she's just truly authentic with what she says and no BS. So. That's why you two make a great, a great uh, dynamic duo. Just like, it's amazing. <laughs> it's cool. Oh, thanks. That is yeah. awesome. Well, I, will be, I, I may be in your area, maybe like in the May time frame. So I'll, I'll be in touch to see if we can maybe line something up. That'll be well, awesome. what? my area. Uh, Drago down in Florida. Oh, in May. Cool. Uh, March. You said March. Oh, I'll March. May. I'll be down there in March too. I, I have an expo. New life. Oh, no. I'll, I'll be, I'll be there in May. I'll be there in May. May. Oh, 
Okay. Okay. We we'd love to get up to where you are there, Laura. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. You live in the best place ever. <laughs> That's pretty good. We're buried so, in snow right now, but it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, think Laura really loves it so much because she was an extreme wildlife tour guide or, you know what I'm saying? Like instructors, yeah. like this girl can live in the cold and the climates like it's nothing and like make a fire and like oh, 50 yeah. mile an hour wind when you're going to die, you know, like yeah. she's like Survival the battle training. Yeah. It's Got like it. no one realizes how much of a badass Laura actually is because to take somebody in those extremes, it's you that have the life of everyone's hands in your palm. And it's your decisions, your experience. You yeah. going through your own dark night of the souls of doing that kind of extreme stuff. So like Laura, I've always given her credit of being a badass because you know what? I don't like cold just because I'm Russian doesn't mean I like to be cold, man. Like <laughs> it's like 50 degrees outside. I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna put a jacket on. But like Laura, she posts videos on the snow and blizzard. She's like, oh yeah, we're just feeding the goats and the cows and everything. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus, it's so horrible in my opinion, but like, look at them, look at the, the majestic nature oh. that surrounds where you're at in Montana, man. Like it's freaking oh. amazing. All the photos you post all the time, just to go on those walks and just to explore nature. Most people would give their, they would give their life to experience that for yeah. what you have. And like, don't mm -hmm. take it for granted, Laura. I know you of all people never take life for granted. And like, no. you live in car you lived in a car right i mean you've been through everything to get oh yeah i lived out vehicles yeah mothering two little babies twins boys <laughs> yeah uh yeah moved all over very nomadic um but you know i want to create like a retreats and have people come and yeah. go off uh, on wilderness excursions maybe not in the winter you know that it's <laughs> But we could do it. I I know how to do it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm that was sure a long your time sons ago. Are, yeah. Um, yeah. what's that? I'm sure your sons are amazing at it. Now, because you probably taught them so much. Yeah. Yep. My son's like homesteading. He's in a tent, you know, in the mountains in the winter. He's got. He's all hooked up, and I constantly send you know the equipment. Like, hey, you probably need this, and probably need that, and and uh, he built himself a little tiny house too here if he comes back, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that my kids are like we're very similar. That's not always the case when people have kids. Sometimes it's right, just right. I, I have a lot of clients who uh, are very awakened people, but their kids are very in the wokeism, you know, because they w went through the system. I'm glad my kids uh, are on board with all this kind of stuff. I mean, I remember taking them to Dane Wigington's house. Um, in high school before they dropped out and just got their GED doing mm -hmm. uh, like homeschool kind of um, I took them to Dane Wigington's house and he educated them about geoengineering and about chemtrails and gave them a stack of papers and flyers and they're like handing it out in their school get about chemtrails. Oh. And then, yeah, they were just like, nobody's like taking this seriously. I don't really want to go to school anymore. And it's like, I totally understand. I was, that kind of student mm -hmm. and um yeah so yeah that reminds, yeah no i was gonna say i love that it's the next generation that's what we me, me and my brother are hoping as well i think that's what we're here for it's for us to take the next generation where they need to go and teach them what we all that we can all that they'll listen to anyway but or just guide them in the right direction but i yeah that's why i i'm i'm so glad we met you laura and i feel connected with you because it is a it's part it runs in the family it's like you know that you were here and to, your grand great grandfather was there to guide you and like you said you were probably uh guiding him when uh, uh before you were born um and i feel like me and my brother for sure have some a deep connection with our grandfather and doing this mission and uh, 100 it's just it, it it makes sense and just the cool. messages yeah everything you i'm sure there's messages and signs that you even feel like you get uh, from from beyond from beyond the veil like him saying yep that's the right that's the right way to go you're you're doing exactly what you're supposed to like, yeah yeah totally. <laughs> i'm curious has uh, drago have you ever done qhht with laura have you ever oh, yeah. done that together good idea no? so 
Laura's never done a QHHT session, and she's holding out for me to be the first one to take a look uh, on that rabbit hole. She's like, I'm going to let you be the first one. So the funny thing is, when I when we first talked about that, no one really knew Laura's never had a QHHT session. And the moment I knew if I talked about it, every freaking QHHT practitioner in the world is now going to be hitting up Laura Eisenhower saying, Laura, let me do your QHHT session. Yeah, <laughs> we agreed it would be me to be the first one. So that is the honor for me. And awesome. I would love to do that for her. And she knows how much that would mean to me because I feel we could probably do a 10 hour session, give her the most amazing session she's ever going to have. Her oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm going to Florida twice this year in 2024. I'm It'll take a couple trips, probably take a few trips to do it all <laughs> to get it. <laughs> Yeah. I think Laura's going to be one of those clients. Remember where I said I've done a little over 500 and then I'm into those 300 sessions. Laura will probably be one of those people where I put under for the next 20 years and <laughs> will still not recover the complexity and totality of how complicated this chick is. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's not all that. <laughs> you always underestimate yourself, Laura. I've always referred to you as a gentle leviathan. Something that's so big, it's like it's it's like an Anunnaki giant, but it's the one that chose to cherish humanity and mm -hmm. to see the beautiful things. And I believe you're so big that you don't even see how big you even are. For sure. I agree with that statement. Like she I, I that's why they had to try to take her off planet just to like get rid of her. Like, well, well that's the only way we can do it. Like <laughs> it's the only way we can stop her. And that's I always told her on the on uh, my first episode of Portal to Another Dimension, I'm like, they had to have targeted you and seen that you caused so much crap in this timeline and woke up so many people up that they had to get you to Mars. And then you're like, no, nah, bro, I'm good. I'm just going to, you know, I like this planet. I love it. I'm not going nowhere. Exactly. Yep. And if she <laughs> she needs an arm, she's got an army behind her, just like her great grandfather. So she's got all the soldiers behind her. So. Yeah, it's it's I, man, this is just touching yeah. my heart so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't. It's so hard to really feel all that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to deal with the human world. Just trying to just function every day, and I, I don't. Yeah, it's hard to like see myself in all that. I don't, but uh, it's okay. It's just, it is what it is. I'm just no. grateful. You guys, wow. We're doing this together. It's just like, yeah. wow. It's funny. She's like the real life Sarah Connor, like the, the, <laughs> the freaking extreme survivalist badass. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm surprised no one's ever done a meme of Laura with all these weapons and she's walking through life, contact in the desert, and she's armed with all this weapons of knowledge. Right. Right. <laughs> all the light energy coming out. Yeah, exactly. Well, you guys just. <laughs> True, it's true. But Drago, that's the well, a good point. If you have reservations, like Laura, I think part of the protocols of QHHT is you have to basically ask, are you, you know, does your higher self agree to, you know, I, I'll reveal this certain certain types of information, right? Is that kind of part of how it works? Yeah, so most people's fears, they think that when I put them under, that they're going to divulge information they wouldn't have normally told me. That's not how it works. The conversation we're, we're having right now, you're as conscious as you are now, as you are when you are under. You know you're laying on a couch directly next to me. You know that I'm guiding you through something you're seeing and you're trying to explain it with your third eye completely open. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so it's a conscious conversation. So your higher self will not disclose, even if it was me and Laura and I was doing a session on her. Her higher self would not divulge private information that Laura would not probably not tell me in real life. And most people think that's how it works. That's not how it works. Your higher self is determined this needs to be talked about. Mm -hmm. There's trust there. They can sense through my energy. Like when I do clients and I put them under and I'm talking to their higher selves, I ask their higher selves to look into my soul, into my light, and to show that client that I would never harm them. I would never use them. I would never think of anything negative whatsoever. Like when I'm doing sessions, I always keep my thoughts completely pure. Even if I do an attractive woman, I will never, ever let my mind acknowledge she's attractive at all because mm -hmm. I am literally talking to her higher self. 
So having a thought like that in your mind while trying to help create a transformation in somebody is very lowly. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah, right. So I have shown the universe that I am to be trusted. And most of my clients are women. Guys hardly ever do QHHD sessions because they're hard asses, man. They don't want to face their traumas. They don't want to admit they have problems. They don't want to admit that they're breaking down crying behind the scenes. I admit that. And now it's a power of mine. It's a superpower. Sure. I cry all the time. You know how much pain and trauma there is in this world? And that makes me strong because I can externalize that and say that. It doesn't make me weak. Everybody right. else is weak that holds it in and they don't talk about it. They don't externalize it. Yeah. They don't pour it out of that trauma. You have. Yeah, you can actually work through it and, and process through it, and, and by expressing it, because otherwise, it's just going to hold you back and just fester. And yeah, you have to do that. And that's what we found on QHHT. It's a weight you hold until you bring these things forward from the past and forgive. Mm -hmm. You can no longer forget it. It'll stay there in your body, and it's a heavy weight. You ever release something so big, and the moment you did it, you felt light as a feather. And you felt all that pressure that was stomping your heart and compressing your soul. And for the first time, you felt power in speaking that truth. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's, that's what we're doing collectively. That's a good point. Like, I think collectively where we're going, like, that's the timeline we were kind of talking about. Like, we have to all do that as a collective society, as, a, as much as... I mean, every country has to, but the U.S. is so screwed up and and been trauma based mind controlled in so many ways <laughs> just by our mockingbird media and everything else. It's like it's about time. Like, let's talk about it. Let's and let's release that crap, you know. So, yeah, yeah. most people fear it, though, because they they view it, like you said, as a weakness. But once on the other side of that, there's so much power. Like you said, that feeling of like you, you just got all this heaviness way off of you and you're you're free. It's like a freedom. It's 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 amazing feeling for sure. Mm -hmm. that's allowed me to i don't think i i don't fear anything anymore i've i've lost almost everything i've ever loved and i'm to the point now where me coming forward with a testimony like i've already died so many times on these programs like i don't fear death anymore and mm -hmm. like if i have to be one of those lights that gets extinguished in the end then that is worth it to me because right. you extend you ex if you extinguish my candle my candle is so powerful. My death will light a million other candles through my single flame, just like Laura. Yeah, exactly. So you you can't you got to be careful who you kill in these in in this world these days because if you erase them from history, history is gonna pop you right in the ass and cause a revolution bigger than you would imagine by doing that. That just thought made me think of JFK as an example. I mean, I think fact that he was assassinated it woke up a lot of people at least at that time and be like this something's going on here we need to we need to fix this timeline because <laughs> you know that's a big one um yeah no just made me think about that well they had to start an entire commission called the warren commission just to combat all the people looking into what actually happened same thing that happened in september 11th they mm -hmm. started a commission of experts yeah uh, and made a lot of money <clears throat> that basically said it was all a lie so it's just like come on man people see it writings on the wall be the change you want to see if you want to have a world where we're no we're no longer stepped on by these people be the change you want to see man start mobilizing yeah you can't just do it with these shows yeah. you have to do it in person every mind you change every mind that you awaken that's a good life, man. That's a life well lived. So yeah. you just got to keep doing it. Grassroots style, man. Guerrilla style. One yeah. by one and inspire everybody. Yeah, that's a good point. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, that makes me think of something else to ask. Oh, what yeah. No, no, And that's the way it has to happen, the grassroots style. Yeah, because otherwise it's coming from a – you're just going to – there's so much other stuff, all the other narratives out there. You talked about, you know, the – commissions around AFK or 9-11 or, you know, the current disclosure movement that through the government of what's, what's happening right now. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Like um, David Grush and all this stuff coming out and the way yeah. they're, they're letting it out and what they're saying and what they're not saying. It's one of those 
it's one of those traps that question because you got to realize man everybody keeps focusing on david grush but just like we talked about with laura in the other show that whistleblowers has been been coming out for the last 40 years yeah you know oh, yeah. Like, let's think about they don't, get, they don't get the attention like this guy is all of a sudden yeah think about the the press club disclosure like what happened with that absolutely nothing we had all these military witnesses and yeah, our grandfather was part of the original one 2001 yeah. didn't he originally have to step out for something because of that the yeah, last yeah. he was afraid to say what he had to say like the only one of the whistleblowers that said i just froze up and like just they had to take him off and say okay well and then he left early he was afraid to stay there he didn't feel safe so you imagine the timeline he would have created because you got to realize that everybody is so important that ultimately that could have been one of his missions but you have to understand your fa your grandfather man it was he was so deep into this information involved with the government that i truly understand why he can't come forward but can you imagine if he would have stepped forward during that event we, we wouldn't have, have we wouldn't have david grush that's for sure you know why i wouldn't have david grush because our grandfather's the nro so he would have been like by the way i'm the nro and this is what's really happening <laughs> so david grush would be like sorry i can't do my whole <laughs> my whole spiel now <laughs> yeah really. and the thing is like uh david grush he literally told the congress people that they asked him a specific question he said i'd be happy to answer that in a skiff yeah yeah you know that's what sucks we can't even tell the truth even if it's in during a congressional testimony we still have to maintain classified structure with material and put in that knowledge so mm -hmm. again how far can we go with people's not willing to risk their life to change the world mm -hmm. right right yeah i think it's in a way like a, a limited hangout that's how i feel it's kind of like controlled opposition in a way i mean did dr greer just came out again at the same time in the summer just i think within the same week or with about the same time with those four four or five guys that had an amazing a mind-blowing testimony about their direct contact interactions with whatever vehicles uh missions and then all of a sudden david grush comes in and you don't hear about it any of it so yeah i just thought that was really suspicious and again I, we talked about this actually with dr sala and we said you know there's there's a reason for it um you know it's still getting us in the right direction right with all the disclosure all the testimony but i think that that's the government's way of kind of controlling it just like they did with the tic tac event and all that stuff i mean it's the same kind of laura what's your take on that <laughs> would you agree to it's agree just, on just that it's uh they're they're still trying to slowly do the drip 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 and it's just yeah um yeah they don't want the real thing yet yeah absolutely absolutely that's how i feel yeah i was gonna say about the whole movement too this is important because of like people like us what we're doing and you're you find more and more people trying to come out with information and say i have all the answers or i have the best intel and all this stuff like the ego they people with that really want to try to come in and I, it's ruined the movement in a lot of ways and disrupted the community and we see it in conferences more and more now we see it just on social media but what is your guys' take on that and about what's happening yeah if you can't question somebody's information and a person gets really defensive or starts to block you I, which which happens a lot um some things Drago and I have both witnessed with certain conferences and I don't really want to name names or anything, but uh, that's kind of like a red flag. Um, we should just all be able to just explore all these topics without it. Just, I, I, I feel truth has like a lot of confidence and, and it stands really strong on its own. And I feel when people uh, get really bent out of shape, if you question what they're sharing, that, there's a sign that they're hiding something or they're not very comfortable with what they're presenting. There's a certain, you know, it's sort of like when we see people going along with the jab or the false narratives, they feel very defensive or very angry if you don't go along with it because deep down they're very actually insecure or very uncomfortable with the decision they made because if they felt really good about it, they wouldn't really care. They'd be like, well, you know, I made my decision and I'm feeling good about it. Take it or leave it. You know, there's there's a certain confidence or a certain strength that comes with being anchored in truth. So 
I find that those with the big egos that are presenting something that like, if you question it or like, you know, then you're, you're, you're a plant or you're a deep state, you know, like Corey Good was like doing, right. you know, that, that, that's a, that's a clear sign that, um, yeah, if you can't be questioned, my, my whole thing is I don't have fixed beliefs. I'm just, I want to be a part of the greater conversation and I want to share what I have discovered and I want to hear what your thoughts are and what you've discovered and let's put it all together and maybe we can figure this out, right? right? Instead of right. pushing narrative and like being like offended if you don't go my way because mm -hmm. I have all the answers or the truth. That's bullshit, you know? It's a, yeah. it's a process. I'm true to myself. That's why my book's called Awakening the Truth Frequency. What does it mean to be true to yourself versus adopting a belief system to the point where you uh, crush other people who don't go along with it. That's so old paradigm, you know, disguised with this new age or disclosure ascension stuff. And mm -hmm. it's like, aren't you guys calling that out? Or isn't the whole point of this to be done with that? No, you're doing the very same thing that we're trying to get away from. Right. So, and that is why it, it, it destroys it. Or, or tarnishes it because that's not what it's supposed to be. So the ones I feel that remain that are still connected like us and others, you know, that still have strong, solid friendships that still come together to share information, you know, that to me is where it's still authentic and where it's still real. And, and I see the rest of it and I just kind of keep it at arm's length. I don't get involved. I don't smear it. And I, you know, not like saying who's who and doing what, I, I think, you know, it's up to the individual to decide. I think it's pretty darn obvious. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, people are stupid, you know, even if they are duped for a bit, you know, I give them a little bit more credit um, mm -hmm. to to discover this on their own without me having to get involved in the drama and the conflict, which is part of the divide and conquer strategy. But, you know, some things are very harmful and need to be called out. I mean, uh, this Disco Tina person, you know, after one of the conferences in Florida, the Galactic Informers, man, she put out like the nastiest and meanest video about me. She's like, look at her. Like she she took one photo of me. I might have been like tired or like my expression was like this or I was sitting on the panel. She's like, she's so ungrateful and like and looks like she's drunk and like all this kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, OK, like I have partied at events before, but, you know, I do show up and I do my presentations and I actually don't actually like, I mean, I, I, I have a much stronger boundary to all that, you know, because it's just whatever. I'm just not really needing all that. But, um, you know, it's just like, wh why are people sinking to this level? You know, it's like right, right. it cost me so many subscribers and, and, and so much support because this woman is just like projecting and like taking like little sound bites or pictures and, and creating a scenario based in her projection that was like really nasty. And mm -hmm. the person who organized the event didn't really stand up for me, but Drago did. And I was really impressed by that. Thank you, Drago. But um, yeah, it's just like, it's a big repellent. So I'm not like really caring to be invited back to some of these things. Um, I, I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm all about mutual love and respect and compassion and, you know, being very understanding, like, this is really difficult. We're targeted. You know, we have traumas. We're doing the best we can. Can we be yeah. gentle with each other, you know, if we're having a hard time and a hard day and not project like, oh, you're on drugs or you're doing this or you're doing that or you're, you're, it's just like, it's maddening. Like, yeah. you know, it's very, very difficult, um, you know, because I'm constantly processing energies through my body and my being. And I'm there, there is a lot you know, that I contend with. And sometimes I'm exhausted or like I miss a plane flight, you know, the things beyond my control. Mm -hmm. So can you like talk to me directly if you think that, you know, there's something off instead of announcing to the public, you know, what your opinion is? I just find the immaturity ridiculous. Right. So it's like, if you're really in contact with benevolent ETs, they're really not guiding you to be a person of integrity, you know? So that's a red flag of like the legitimacy of the shit you're even sharing. You right. know, because if you're really connected to benevolence or if you're really a Christ conscious being, you know, you'd be like, man, maybe Laura needs a hug or like she looks like she's having a hard time or any right. of us. It goes you know, back to the high school. The field on the front line, the you know, yeah. like this is not celebrity. We're on the front lines. It's not yeah. easy. We have our tough moments. You know, can we like have each other's back and hug each other instead? So I'm really repelled by that lack of maturity. And those kind of projections. I'm sorry, did I just completely go off on a rant? No, that was that's exactly what I wanted to 
get into because I think that's vital and crucial in this time and disclosure that we can't still all come together. Um, everybody has their bad days, whatever it might be, but like why rip on other people for, yeah, for the stupidest things. Like I said, it's like going back into high school. Like we've all, we've all been through that. We don't need to go back there. We're, and we're supposed to be the community that again, accepts is, has loving open acceptance to people that have gone through drama, have, do need help. They, 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 they completely were on the other side of it, whatever they might've done in the past, whatever the um, mind control was that they went through, meaning like all through 2020, 2021, everything else. But so what if they, they made a bad decision? Now they're coming on our side. It's not us to be like, Oh, see, ha ha. I told you so. It's like, no, okay. Yeah. We're glad you're here. Let's work together now. (laughs) Exactly. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, let's just have a heart and just, I mean, it's, it's really rough. It's really rough. Um, you know, people processing, you know, this level of betrayal or feeling like, Oh God, I didn't see that. Or like, Oh, now I finally get it. It's like, not this, I told you so, or yeah, you know, you're so stupid. You know, it's like, no, like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like it's really rough and it's a lot to recover from and, um, you know, love you. And just like, (laughs) let's just heal and move forward and, and thrive. I think that's what this year is about. I mean, that, that makes sense to me as far as ah, where things are going. But I guess we're getting, Dan, we're getting kind of close to the end. Do you guys have like final thoughts or Dan, any last thing you want to say? Yeah. I mean, I was just like, if you guys want to tell us about Rebel Disclosure or Rebel uh, Collective, your, your show on Rumble and like, how did you guys start it up or how did you guys connect on that? I'm just curious, you know? Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I'll just start just, uh, Finally meeting, well, Drago and I have known each other for a really long time and we meet up at conferences and the conference I went to in Florida, I was able to go visit him in Tampa and he touched up some of my tats <laughs> and gave me a nice. touch and we're just kind of sitting there and I'm just, you know, and he's just sharing just all his knowledge and all these different, you know, people that he's been researching and a lot about his own journey and the things that he's, you know, coming to terms with about his story. And I'm like, man, Drago, like you, you need to really be out there. And like, I just, this is so huge. I'm like, God, and we just both like almost in the same moment, just let's do a show together. <laughs> right? I mean, Drago, from your point of view, what, how did it go? That's exactly how it happened, man. And uh, the funny thing is five years ago, I was shown my future through a QHHT session. And it really freaked me out because what it showed me was I was in the public and I was really known and my past started coming out, meaning my involvement with the government and all that stuff. I've had to hide my entire life. And I was shown that me and Laura would have a show together. And when I told Laura that, she's like, man, I understand there's a lot of timelines going on, but like to that actually come true. And I believed it so much that I knew it would come true. And my higher self told me that the most important part of the creation of this show is Laura has to have no idea it's going to be created. It has to come from her. Oh, nice. In the moment she said that I took a breath in, I closed my eyes. I said, holy shit, this is the moment. (laughs) <laughs> the moment that starts the freaking future and it ignited my heart man wow that great. got me out of the shadows and i started posting photos of myself and i was so recluse man mm-hmm. when i walked away in 2015 i didn't i haven't posted a single photo of myself since 2015 maybe 2013 mm-hmm. because like i left everything i ever known i left my businesses my family all my friends in Texas Mm -hmm. and my businesses, they were very successful. So I just got to that point where I was no longer happy. I had all the money and I did everything I thought I wanted to do, but I realized that the money was not the answer because I having money and then you treating it like it's nothing taught me a big lesson. Mm -hmm. And I took kind of like a vow of poverty when I moved in 2015 and to be away from the money and to wow. get back into art to find my heart again to be in more nature and like i said the creation of that show that was me coming out of my dark cave and mm. it's been an explosion ever since and everybody always tells me man when me and laura are together on our shows 
our shows are freaking mind blowing. And yes, mainly, Laura, our shows get the most views on your channel. I noticed that. I was like, that's freaking interesting that the people are choosing to watch us together because of our information is it's crazy combined. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Very cool. That's true manifestation you had there. You just I mean to make that come come to light. Have her come up with the idea. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah. And um, so yeah. So um, how long have you guys been doing that? You've been on for the last year or almost a year. Well, we 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 dropped it May fifteenth of last year. Okay. Wow. You. <laughs> nice. Got Everything. Well, I know date. I know because that that's the day that changed my life. Ah, <laughs> awesome. And so that's exclusively on Rumble, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. So yeah, so yeah, spread it and share it. We really want to build it and get it out to more people. And and my website's cosmicguide.org, and pretty much everything I do is there. I have a subscription thing, and love our show. Yep. We, who's our next guest? John D'Souza. Yeah, we got John D'Souza tomorrow. We got oh, the original Fox Mulder. I love that guy. He's a good guy. You know, I met him in the bathroom. I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> I just standing there and I'm just, you know, in the urinal. And, oh, there's John D'Souza. And I was like, this is this is wild. There's only one other person that happened to, and that's Gary Nolan, which uh people uh have thought to say about him, which is a whole nother story about uh his stock. But anyway. I think that's going to be awesome. I saw you guys do Jay Widener recently. I blew my mind. And um, yeah, you guys have so many amazing guests. It's it's incredible. So um, oh, I see more. Thank you guys so much for having yeah. us. It's really been wonderful. And Laura, what's the name of your book and when is it coming out? It's called Awakening the Truth Frequency and it's coming out in March. Okay. March and 1st. Come on, yeah. guys. Pre-order. already pre-ordered mine. I'm freaking... I could have asked Laura, hey, man, send me like a pre-copy so I can read this book. But I'm like, nope, I'm going to buy it now. And I'm going to read it the day that shit comes out, man. Gosh. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> It'll be good, I hope. Just a little nervous when my parents read it. Or I hope they don't read it. But maybe they'll read it, flip through it. <laughs> oh, That's gonna great. You just got to relinquish that fear, man. Because it's oh, those, yeah. fears, those things we carry with us our entire life. Oh, yeah. Just, I mean, it, it, even if the fear comes up, I just walk right through it. It just, there's no stopping what has to be done. It's so now that we have to complete this mission in this life. The more we prolong it, the more we're going to suffer for it. And then we're, you're going to realize one day that the time has now passed. You mm -hmm. never completed your mission and your time expired. Yep. Yep. So don't be that person, man. Be the change get, you want to see now. Oh, I, get, never. I, I don't know anything else. <laughs> yes, the time is now. Even my wife keeps telling me that too. But sometimes she's like, I don't know if you should talk about certain subjects, but <laughs> but you should. Yeah, it's all about, yeah, getting through it together. And th that, that, this is the time. Yeah. And that's what the book is really about. It's just, you know, just awaken that. Just like set yourself free. That's you you can only enslave yourself by limiting yourself and 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 powering in a corner or or saying, oh, you know, humanity's not ready. Yeah, they're they're not ready. Yeah, of course they're ready. Are they ready to like still be lied to and deceived and assaulted and abused? I mean, you know, that uh, <laughs> Give, give humanity a, a little bit more credit. How about be ready for something that actually is going to wake you up and actually heal you and transform you versus be ready for more bullshit, more psyops, more bioweapons, more mind fuckery, you know? Mm. Like, no, humanity's ready for that. No, it's ready for like, how about enough of it already done with it? Get back to like yourself, the truth and coming together in unity consciousness. <laughs> Definitely. Humanity's ready for us to step forward and, and step into the light and present it in our own authentic way, each of us, the way the in our own unique way that we we do it. So absolutely. that's it. And and Drago, you just kicked off a, a new show. What's that called and where did they find that? Yeah, I just dropped Portal to Another Dimension, and Laura was my first guest, man. So I'm I'm freaking excited to get my own show going and to create my own theme and to like throw the portals in there, man. Like I'm theming my entire show over portals. So I'm trying Very to make cool. it, man. Nice. And that's on Rumble as well or, or YouTube? Yep. Or... That's it. Portal 2 I mentioned on Rumble. Both of our shows are on Rumble. Unfortunately, YouTube censorship means you can't have a show and talk oh, about okay. stuff on YouTube. So unfortunately, this is where we have arrived. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a slow to build new platforms. I mean, gosh, losing my channel has changed everything. Just like, whoa. Yeah. 
Yeah, you've had to do that a lot, I'm, I know, in the past. And um, no, we'll definitely support you guys to try to get people to come your way. We'll probably be there with you. Have Probably won't have a choice soon enough. But like you said, the time is now to get this information out. So whatever, screw it. Like we're, we're going to be loud as, as loud as we can for now. So can't wait to have you on our show too. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, well, thanks for joining us today, guys. Really appreciate your time and, and great conversation. Uh, look forward to some more. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Till next time. All right. Bye.